Hi everyone, today we're going to take a look at Photolab's HSL tool. And HSL stands for Hue, Saturation, and Luminance. And basically it's just a way for you to control the colors in your image. And you can do this in a very subtle way to give your images a little more pop, or you can do it in a more dramatic way to be creative. And I'm going to show you a few examples of each, so let's get started. All right, to access the HSL tool, basically you open up an image for editing, and then you go into the color tab, and this is where you'll see the HSL panel. Now the panel is broken down into three pieces. First, we have our uh, individual channels here, or colors that we can choose from. And then here we have the color wheel, where we can choose individual colors, a range of colors, or we can choose a color using the hue picker from the image, and we, this is also where we make adjustments to the color. And then down here we have the saturation, luminance, and uniformity sliders. And I'm going to walk you through how to use all of these things in the HSL panel. Now the most basic use of the HSL panel is to pick individual colors that are in the image and then make adjustments to either saturation and luminance. So looking at this image for example, let's say I want to make the skies a little bit richer blue. I want to make the grass even more lush than it is. And I want to bring out the reds in this uh, barn back here in this cabin, uh, particularly the uh, fireplace. So all I have to do really is let's uh, pick the blues first. So I'll just pick blue. And then I'll uh, increase the saturation, like so, and maybe bring the luminance down or the brightness down just a tad. And then I want to work on the greens, so I'm going to go ahead and pick the green. And I'm going to increase the saturation a tiny bit, and maybe bring the luminance down so it just looks a little bit richer. And then I just simply pick the reds from here because I want to work on the chimney and the uh, rooftop here on the barn. And I'll just increase the saturation there. And again, maybe just bring the luminance down or the brightness down a bit. And if we do a comparison of the before and after, you can see I gave the image a lot more pop just by adjusting the saturation and luminance of the colors that were already there. Now, I also want you to notice that here along the channel palette of colors that you'll notice there's a little white dot under each color that I made a change to. So if I want to make further changes to the blue, let's say I want it to be even more saturated, I can just quickly jump to it and then we can go to the greens and then I can pull the saturation back a little bit. And I won't have to touch any of the other colors. Also, you'll notice that when I'm picking the individual colors off this palette, see what happens to the color wheel? So when I pick red, you'll notice that it's picking this range of colors here. And when I pick green, it's picked a pretty wide range for all of the greens. And then when I pick blue, it's picked a very uh, narrow range or a narrow range of blue colors. Now, if you want to see the colors being affected directly in the image, instead of looking at like this little range here, what you can do is put your mouse right over this highlighted area of blue, push the control or command key, and then left click on your mouse and hold it. And you can see that the colors not being affected went to a grayscale, and then the colors being affected stay their original color. And I can let go of the mouse or click on the mouse and kind of toggle back and forth to kind of see exactly what colors are going to be changed. So let's do the same thing for the uh, green channel. I'll put my mouse over here, hold the control or command key, then cl left click. And I can see that these are the colors in the greens that are going to be affected. And I can let go. And I can just kind of toggle back and forth. So you can see none of the blues or red are being affected. Now I can make additional changes to the colors in the image by working with not just the saturation and luminance, but also with the color wheel directly. Now if we take a closer look at the color wheel, you'll notice there's actually two rings here. We have an inner ring here which represents our source colors that we can choose. And then we have an outer ring here which represents our target colors that we want to shift to. And then you'll notice there's dots here on the inside of the source wheel, which represents the color range that we've chosen. And then we have outer dots here, which represents how much are we going to feather away from our source colors. So for example, we've picked green here. 
but we want uh, Photo Lab to choose or feather into this uh, blue area just slightly. And over here, we've picked yellow, but we don't want it to feather or choose any colors in sort of the orange or reds. We want to make kind of a hard stop on the yellows here. Now, the outer ring here has a dot that is really a handle to slide or move the outer ring around the inner ring to colors that we want to shift to. So, for example, let's say the grass here is a little bit too green for my taste and I want to make it a little bit warmer or a little more yellow. All I have to do is grab this handle here on this dot and then shift it over to the yellow a bit. Now, I can go very extreme and kind of make it look like fall or I can just make a very small change, a slight shift to the yellows like so. So this allows me to make changes to just the colors that I want to in the image without affecting anything else. Because if I wanted to make the grass a little bit warmer, the only other way to do it really is to use the white balance tool. But that would shift all of the other colors like the reds and the blues. And maybe I don't want to do that. Now I can grab the individual dots here in the color wheel to expand the range of colors that I want to make changes to. Now this image doesn't have a huge range of colors that, that, that makes this obvious, so we'll work on another image a little later where, where it's a little more obvious. But before we do that, if I want to go back to the original green selection that we had before instead of expanding out like I did here, I could just double click on the green and that'll reset it back to its default values. And then I just have to uh, make the same adjustments I did before like so. Or if I wanted to reset everything and just kind of start over, I can just click on the reset icon there. Now there's one other color on the palette and that's actually all colors and that's this white dot here. So what this does is it selects all colors at the same time. However, you can still use the outer ring and shift all of the colors at the same time, as you can see here. Now the way it's shifting is basically Whatever color is on the inner ring is going to change to the outer ring. So, like, if we look at the sky, that was kind of a blue. That blue got shifted to what? Sort of this more cyan, teal color. And then the greens down in here, if we go to the green area, you can see that the greens got shifted to be just a little bit more yellow right in here. And then finally, the reds here, it looks like they got shifted a little bit purple. So this is just kind of an interesting way to be a little bit maybe creative with your images. Uh, it's not something I ever use, but uh, I just wanted to explain what this little white dot was for. Okay, let me reset this, and I want to show you one more thing. Now, if we look in the center here, we see a little eyedropper, and this is actually our hue picker. So rather than picking the colors directly off this color palette up here, we can click on the eyedropper, and then move our mouse over the image and it'll pick any color that's under that eyedropper. So for example, if I want to pick the sky, you can see that it picked this blue range down in here and then I can make changes the same as I did before. However, let's do a comparison. If I pick the greens, for example, just off the color palette, you can see the range of colors that it picked. However, if I use the eyedropper and pick a grassy area, look how it shifted. These are the actual colors in the grass, and there's a lot more yellow and reds in the grass than, say, the green off the color palette up here. So using the eyedropper is really probably a more accurate way to pick the colors off your image rather than picking them off directly. So. The color palette up here, the channel palette, will give you a little bit more precision or accuracy to the colors that you want to pick. Uh, but this will give you a more true representation of the colors of your image when you use the eyedropper. And you can kind of zoom into your image and get a closer look at the area that the eyedropper is selecting from. So if I wanted to pick a little bit of green and white or green and sort of this brownish gray, uh, I can do that when I zoom in, or I can click on the eyedropper tool up here and I can expand that circle so it's larger. Or if I want more precision, 
I can make it even smaller. Now I found, you know, around 10 or 11 pixels is about the right size for me. But you'll also notice there's a reset button here. What this does is if I click on, say, this green area, right, and you'll notice that the uh, color wheel, the highlighted area shifted a little bit. If I hit reset, it's going to snap it back to the closest color off the color palette. So if I click on the blue area and then I hit reset, see how it just shifted a little bit? I can go into this red. It's picked sort of this orange, but I can reset and it'll just it'll just snap to the nearest color on the color palette. Now, let me show you a couple of creative uses for the color wheel. Let's take this picture here and I want to make it look more like it's in the fall. All I have to do is use my little hue picker tool here, click on the green area, and I'm just going to shift these maybe to a red, like so. And it's picked up a little bit too much of the yellow in the background, so I'm going to back this off, like so. So now I got a good mix of red and yellow here, and then I'll just increase the saturation on that. I'll pick the yellows here, increase the saturation there. So now this looks more like fall than it did before. And then let's do another one. Uh, let's say, for example, I want to make this an alien frog. So I'll go ahead and pick the blue area in here. And I will shift him to be a green frog instead. Then let me pick this brownish area over here. And I'll make this a little more red. So we have a red mushroom. Increase the saturation. And then let's change this green grass maybe to yellow and do a quick comparison. So you can quickly change the look of an image to something more subtle, like changing the uh, scene to more of a fall color type scene or just be more dramatic like this. Uh, here's another example where I just changed the color of this, uh, whatever this is. I forget what it's called. It's a lizard of some kind. Uh, now, the last tool I'm going to show you is the uniformity slider. And this is the most difficult to explain and also the most difficult to show online because the changes are very, very subtle. But if we look at the skin tones of my face, for example... My skin tone is very red, and that's natural. That's what I really look like. Uh, but if I'm going to shift the tones of my face a little bit, we know how to do that, right? So I'll use the hue picker, and I'll pick sort of a reddish area on my face, maybe here. And you can see, yeah, it's definitely very hard to the red here. But I'm going to shift it so that my skin tone is just a little bit more natural. Just a tiny bit, right? Now, if I slide the uniformity slider all the way to the right, it's going to try and apply that change more evenly across my entire face. And if I slide this all the way to the left, it's going to apply that change less evenly, uh, meaning uh, it's a little bit more contrasty in terms of color and tone. So you can see that this area here has been shifted properly, but other areas of my face have not. Now, it's not very obvious, maybe online, with, with normal skin tones. So let me show you an extreme example. Let me shift my face all the way to green. So now, I'm instead of human, I'm uh, an Orion <laughs> from Star Trek. Now, if you look at my lips here, you can see they're still a little bit red, right? However, if I shift the uniformity slider over to 100%, that's going to spread that green a little bit more easily across my face and into my lips here. So now my lips are practically green. Versus if I slide the uniformity slider all the way to negative 100, you can see that my lips definitely turned red, so it's not being spread out as evenly. It's separating the tones more. You can actually see a little bit of red here on my chin and my cheeks as well. 
So there's a hundred percent. Okay, so everything is green, negative hundred percent. Now some more reds are starting to bleed in because it's not shifting that green quite as much, right? All right, let's uh, make a couple other fixes because I've noticed that my pinstriping has also turned green. Uh, so I'm going to slide the uniformity slider back to 100% so that now my face is nice and evenly green. And if I want to fix this pinstriping, if I use the uh, hue picker here, you'll notice that it's actually picking up all the greens and everything that I had shifted to in my face. So instead of doing that, what I need to do is pick one off the channel palette here. And this pinstriping was sort of a gold color right in here. Now that I've picked the gold, I'm going to shift this to be more, let's see, yeah, a little more red, like so. That's pretty good. And then we'll increase the saturation a bit. And then uh, let me make my jacket. So let me pick blue. Well, I, I can just put, use the uh, color picker in this case. Saturate it slightly, and we'll turn this red to match the uh, color in my face. Like so. We'll crank up the uniformity. All right. And now I'm a real Orion Starfleet officer. <laughs> All right, and that's everything I know about the HSL tool, and I hope you found this video helpful. If so, consider buying me a coffee or making a small donation in the links below. And I plan on making more videos for Photolab 6, so if you have any questions or you'd like to see me make a video on a particular tool in Photolab 6, just leave it in the comments below. But I appreciate you watching, and I hope to see you again soon.